The Internet is growing larger and more influential every day. It seems as if almost any piece of information you could ever want is just a mouse click away. But as anyone who's ever surfed the net knows, it's also full of information you don't want, that you can't verify, and that just might be completely bogus. As we discovered when we first aired this story in the spring of 1997, the Internet, as wonderful as it is, has become the world's largest rumor mill, chock full of hoaxes, scams, and conspiracy theories. Wasn't there a, a rumor spread around? Yes, whatever it whatever was. Whatever it was. Yes. <laughs> Our guide to online nonsense is Andrew Cantor, senior editor of Internet World magazine. Name a topic, and he'll find some kind of mischief. Say investments. Fast cash, instant cash, easy money. Just scroll down. Let's see how many. Well, there are about 2,000. We can tell from Two about 2,000. Or what about health information? There's lots of good stuff. So someone wrote in, I've heard about an arthritis cure using raisins and gin. <laughs> okay. Saying whatever you want, goofy or genuine, asinine or accurate, and no editor to tell you no. That's the whole point of the Internet. What if I just wanted to vent my rage at whatever? Or I heard a great story that I wanted everybody to know. Can I just get out there? Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. In about 30 seconds, Cantor turned me into an instant publisher on the World Wide Web. I'll use a little tag here to make it big. And I'm going to save the file. But I have my page. There you go. I can go out there and say anything right. I want. It'll take me about 10 seconds to make this live on the Internet. Live on the Internet. That's where everyone wants to be. And a whole industry has grown up to help them get there. From the biggest company to a guy in his basement, anyone can have a site on the World Wide Web and a whole lot better looking than mine. Fancy layout, full of photos and graphics. And they're all competing to pop up on your computer screen. The Internet's huge. A lot of ways to find your way around it. There are things called search engines. Type in a word, type in a phrase, and it finds the information out on the Internet. Gives you a list. For instance, if you want information on the 1996 TWA jet explosion, type in TWA 800. Whoa, the first link. TWA 800 cover-up. Ooh, there we go. Cover-up, 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 cover-up. What the media is hiding. What the media knows and isn't telling us. More of what the media is hiding. <laughs> ah. Here, you have TW800, the facts, from a different place. Oh, the streak of light report to hit the plane followed the course like the outline of a parabola, not unlike a guided missile. I like it. Not there unlike. it is. Boy, and doesn't that look authentic to you? Yes, fact one. There are thousands of wild theories on thousands of authentic-looking websites. Take this site. Hundreds of pages of conjecture and hearsay masquerading as fact. And this is the man behind the site, J. Orland Graby of Reno, Nevada. He has a Harvard PhD, but now he's spouting conspiracy theories in cyberspace. He says that Commerce Secretary Ron Brown was murdered, and that the Israeli Mossad was involved in Vince Foster's death. Graby insisted on meeting us at a Reno bar named Area 51 after the secret Air Force base in the Nevada desert. You have a platform around the world. Yes, I like to think that in those small, uh, narrow subjects in which I'm actually writing about, I'm competing with the New York Times. I mean, when you say you compete with the New York Times, you, it's actually true. If you plunked or, in TWA 800, mm -hmm. you might get a couple of articles from the New York Times, Correct. and you'd get a couple of articles from you. And uh, an unsophisticated person really wouldn't be able to, to, to distinguish in terms of accuracy, validity, checking, journalism. Well, that's that. true. That is, uh, there's a the good side of this is that everyone can become a source. The bad side is that everyone can become a source. Now, you say flat out the TWA 800 was shot down by a phosphorus headed missile. Yeah. You don't say it's a theory. Uh -huh. You don't say maybe. You don't say there are indications uh -huh. that. You just say it. Yeah. And, uh, and you don't that's have what any I have to of, say. Yeah, but you don't have any proof of that. Well. Well. So? So, if you're getting your information from the Internet, be prepared to encounter the likes of J. Orland Gravy. But at least he puts his real name on his nutty ideas. On the Internet, anyone can pretend to be anyone else. 
Remember that site it took Cantor about 10 seconds to make for me? I could have that say Mike Wallace's page, and I could go out, wouldn't be nice, but I could yes. go out and say whatever I want, and it would be under his name, but under I would name. be doing it. It changes from Leslie Stahl's page to Mike Wallace's page. But it's page. still my page. Correct. The same anyone can pretend to be anyone principle Myself. applies to basic email. When you get an email, it's supposed to have a return address so you can tell who sent it and from where. Not that I'd ever want to do this, but could somebody send a, an email message um, and make it look like it was coming from somebody else? Oh, easily. Want me to show you? Yeah, show me. All right. What I'm going to do is tell it that I am you. So. You're going to be me. You're right. going to send a message and sign my name, and everybody's going to believe it came from me. Right. The way he made the fake and Leslie Stahl email it. believable was by somehow rerouting it through the CBS computer. News computer. So it has a, not a stamp of approval, but to someone who does a little bit of extra checking, they'll see, well, it did come from CBS. It did not come from Internet World Magazine. Oh, there we go. A message from Leslie Stahl. Leslie at CBS Thank News. Thank you for a great interview. Let me ask you something. And it's from Leslie Stahl. Could you do something as wild and probably inappropriate as you sending me a message from the president that was routed through the White House computer? Piece of cake. Exactly what I did now, except instead of Leslie at CBS News, president at whitehouse.gov. Send it through the White House computer. Not a problem. That is astonishing to me. And when I discovered I could do that, as I did, I wrote a letter to the White House people saying, I can do this, you should make it inaccessible. And that was months ago, and I bet they haven't done anything about it. Is this forgery? Um, I guess, yeah, I suppose it is. In a way. In a way, because I'm fooling someone. I could send this to someone, and I could fool them. Forgery, fakery, falsehoods. They're everywhere on the Internet. And rumors are so rampant that cyberspace is becoming a dangerous place, especially for corporate America. That's where it's important for a company to really be prepared. James Alexander is in the business of listening to the Internet. His service, eWatch, electronically monitors hundreds of thousands of new Internet messages every day. More than 200 big corporations pay for daily reports telling them everything that's being said about them online. Everything, the good, the bad, the lies and the rumors. There have always been rumors about big companies. Mm -hmm. um, Procter and Gamble was called satanic at one point. Uh, is this is this that different? The problem now is that people are out on the internet. Instead of telling twenty people, they're telling twenty million people, and that's the issue. And they're doing it instantly. And they're doing it instantly. Alexander's company watches not just websites, but another huge part of the Internet, news groups. Those are thousands of online conversation groups covering topics from UFOs to gardening. It's in the news groups that rumors often start. Like one false report on the day that O.J. Simpson was acquitted, that Mrs. Fields Cookies, one of Alexander's clients, had donated free sweets to O.J.'s victory party. Instantly, an effort to boycott Mrs. Fields was underway online. Now, over the next two days, which happened to be a weekend, that rumor migrated to eight major high-profile news groups. By Monday, they had seen a single-digit drop in sales that was inexplicable, and they decided at that point that they had to respond. We didn't do it. It's not true. End of rumor. But you can't kill a rumor you don't know is there. And most companies still don't. To illustrate, we signed 60 minutes up for the eWatch service to see what's being said online about us. And the subject line is Mac Horn 60 Minutes. His explicit. Mac Horn was interviewed in a recent Ed Bradley story. Horn publishes a guide to sex tours of Asia. And basically he's saying, how much do you think they paid Mr. Horn for his interview? And so it looks like Mac Horn is responding, and he's saying $50,000 plus first-class airfare to New York Hotel for my entire company with limo service, first-class <gasps> hotel accommodations. I know that's not true. That is not true. Okay. I am denying that. Okay. Um, this is a you, rumor. This is a rumor, and it's now on the web. This is on the Internet right now as we speak. Right. And before you know it, you may have this rumor now appearing all over the Internet for various reasons.
but I mean someone else or he himself could f you're saying could fling it absolutely in every direction absolutely in a flash absolutely well whether it's a malicious lie about 60 Minutes or a conspiracy theory about TWA 800, rumors never die on the Internet. Now, I know that you are a great advocate of the whole web the way it is. It shouldn't be regulated, shouldn't be touched. Absolutely. Shouldn't this be expunged? On what grounds? That it's wrong. It's inaccurate. It's irresponsible. It is spreading fear and suspicion of the government. I mean, 10,000 oh, reasons. sedition, I see. So it's anti-government, so it spreads fear. Who should do it, first of all? Who should be in charge of, of regulating this? Should the government do it? So you think it's better just to leave all this junk out there? Yes. Then the alternative, which would be some force that you don't trust, making decisions about what stays and doesn't stay. Some force that no one should trust. The truth is that even if there was a force that we did trust, the technology is so advanced that an online policeman would be impossible. How is a kid supposed to discern what's true and not true? Everything looks the same, and he's writing a paper or he's learning. Well, what if a kid goes to the library and gets a whole bunch of magazines on a subject? Whitewater, there's a political subject. Well, they have some conservative magazines, some liberal magazines. Who do you believe? I think the, it forces the consumer, whether it's a ninth grade student oh, or you, a you don't have very many magazines filled with people who are just spouting off. Very true. But there's a lot of bad information in the world in general. This lets everyone have a voice. Yes. And this forces people, that ninth grade student, to look and say, who is saying this? Is this a real organization saying something? It forces them to not just take what's handed to them, and accept it as true, but to think about it. Think about this the next time your ninth grader goes online. Think about J. Orlin Graby. I think that people reading your page would say you make this stuff up. Oh well, then Just fine. Just out of your head. Then fine, they can ignore it. You don't believe all this stuff, do you? Oh, I don't know. I don't believe much of anything. J. Orlin Graby is still out there on the internet, his website bigger than ever. Andrew Cantor no longer edits Internet World magazine, but he's still online as an independent computer consultant. And he told us that the White House just recently figured out how to stop people from rooting bogus email through its computer systems.